Hello friends, welcome to my channel. I am Noelle and I have been missing a fall and Halloween something fierce. It is starting to get warm here in California. <sighs> and I am ready for fall already. So I decided to work on a little Halloween-y project for myself to make me feel the cool vibes. <laughs> and also, I have a ball to go to in St. Louis later this year. I really don't know for sure what kind of dress I'm gonna wear to this ball, but I thought I would start by trying out this Scroop Patterns Angelica gown, which I have been wanting to try for quite some time, and I thought if I'm gonna do that, and this ball is in October, I should make a witchy one. <laughs> so that is what we're gonna do today. The task list for today is to cut out the pattern on the paper, uh, read through the instructions thoroughly, like make sure I understand them. I have made the Ada gown, so I'm pretty sure that they are very similar and this should be not too big of a problem. I also do want to make a 12 just to make sure it fits. I'm just going to make like the top part of it just to make sure everything is cool because I did have to do a little adjusting for the Ada gown. And then I'm gonna, you know, go ahead and sew up that 12. Hopefully this happens all today. I'm not putting any pressure on myself for that to happen, but we're gonna give that part a go. Once we get that all settled, I will be cutting out some fabric, hopefully some silk for this one. I'm still trying to decide if I want it to be purple or black, kind of leaning towards the black, but we'll see. Uh, I have a couple photo shoots that are gonna happen in the fall and I thought it would be really fun to have like a, a super witchy garment to wear with a little pointy hat. That should be super fun. So I'm gonna get started on this by cutting out the paper pattern. Okay, according to this size chart, I am a perfect size 46. Um, probably a little bit less than this in my stays, but I am happy to cut out the larger one for my mock-up and just see how that fits. Also notable with the skirt patterns, the code for the skirt pieces, because they have a template for parts of the skirt, like you cut out this curve right here. So the skirt pieces, you cut out a different like letter number system than you do on the rest of the, the pattern. So I figured out that I am a size E. Also just fair warning, I got two new kitties this week and I am madly allergic to them. So you might see my eye be a little red and puffy. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> So we have some clarity. I'm basically going to do the complicated version of both. <laughs> I want to do the back of view A, which I always like a more, a more back, just more in the back. And then I'm going to do the front of view B because it is slightly longer. Um, I am not going to do these little roughly bits. That's not my jam, but I would like it a little bit longer than here, so I think those are the pieces I'm going to deal with. All right, so you may have noticed that I put some pieces over here right behind me, and those are A, the sleeves, and B, they are the skirt template pieces. I am not sure if I'm gonna use them at all because I don't really see a point to them, but I wanna read through the instructions fully before I cut them out either way, just to make sure that I cut them out properly and that I understand what's going on with them. Because when I did the Ada gown, I was like, I don't even understand what's happening here. The historical method for doing this doesn't how you cut that. Normally those pieces are just pleated straight and then you lay the, the top part of the garment inside of it, stitch it down, and then you can cut it down. So I don't know which way I'm going to go with this, but I wanted to not cut them until I was absolutely sure. Which leads into the next task, which is read through the instructions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And while I sit here and read this 40 page document, I'm going to tell you about this week's sponsor, Blue Land. Blueland offers a variety of hand soaps and cleaning products that are made from plant-based and planet-friendly ingredients that won't break the bank. Blueland uses no single-use plastics in any of their bottles, tablets, wrappers, or shipping materials. I've been using Blueland in my home for the past two years and I can honestly say that I really enjoy their products. Because I own many kitties and I like to sew with silk, I am constantly washing my hands. 
I was getting really tired of having to go to get fresh hand soaps all the time and throwing away plastic bottles. Even the refill bottles come in huge plastic jugs. With Blue Land, all I have to do is toss a nickel-sized tablet into my Glass Forever bottle filled with warm water, and I'm ready to go in minutes. No shaking or stirring required. I would also like to highly recommend their dishwasher tablets, which are highly effective and don't come in those little plastic shells. I got the Hand Wash Duo, which comes with two Glass Forever bottles and soap tablets in Iris Agave, Perrin Lemon, and Lavender Eucalyptus. These products take up a lot less space than the clunky refill bottles that I was using, and refills start at only $2.25. They have some delightful limited edition bottles on offer right now, so if you'd like to try their simple and sustainable products, all you have to do is click my link below and get 15% off your first kit. Thanks for sponsoring me today, Blue Land. Okay, so I figured out what the pieces are for the skirt, which is slightly different than the Ada gown. So there are four total pieces, four, I can hold up four fingers, and here are two of them. You have to figure out that you have to tape these together and then it is a top template and a bottom template for the skirt. So like if you want to train it helps you cut that piece and if you the top gets cut in a really weird way. Anyway, uh, the problem is one is marked piece J and the other is just not marked. <laughs> and this is the top, no this is the bottom of, <laughs> of the skirt. There's another one for the top, the, the waistline, this is the hemline. The waistline one, it also has one piece that is marked and the other's not. So, I mean, it's not that hard to figure out which ones go together, but you have to figure out that you need to put them together, which is a little confusing. It would have been nice had they been marked and, like, put, hey, tape these together on here kind of thing, but whatever. Um, anyway, so I have read all of the instructions thoroughly through, and now I'm taping these together to try to get them so that I have a full set of pattern pieces to work with. Okay, I've cut out my 12 fabric right here. I used entirely scrap fabric. This whole huge basket here, which, I mean, there's a giant trash can there for scale, uh, from Fort Emma Mason, <laughs> um, is full of scraps of stuff. So I used scraps to make this entire mock-up, which I'm super happy with. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this together. I'm gonna do that on the machine because it's faster and easier. Although I'm gonna try and follow, like, the boning channels and stuff, even though I'm not probably going to put bones in this just for the try on, but like I'm going to try to make the channels and do the things that I need to do to like make it structurally similar to what it's going to be just so I can really check that fit. Okay, we have a mock up together, which I'm very excited about. I'm going to put on my stays and see what there is to see about this mock up. This guy is done. Okay, so we have a try on in my little hobbit shorts of funny cuteness. Um, it's hot here today, friends. So let's talk about this guy. So it's pretty much just like the Ada gown where I probably will take this down in the front, the top, but then the entire side, why did I do white on white? That was genius. The entire side is a little bit high. So this has a 5 8 inch seam allowance and like it's supposed to be able to cover up skirts <laughs> that will sit at my waistline, which is like way down here was where they sit. So I'm probably going to add maybe up to two inches to every piece all the way around to make this slightly longer, to make the back slightly longer. I'll show you the back in just a second. But other than that, the fit is pretty good. Like, I need to do a little adjustment on these guys are also going to get thinner, so I need to think about that if I want them to be thicker than they have them patterned for. I usually have to add about a half an inch in width to the straps just so that they're like wide enough for me to cover this area right here so yeah gonna do some pattern modifications let's have a look at the back okay so there she be um actually it looks very good if this had a bone in it it would be nice and taut and straight everything seems to fit really well there's not a lot of problems that i can see other than i'm just gonna make it all longer Okay, so it's pattern modification time for me, and then I need to make a new to-do list of what I want to get done for today. Okay, I'm back. I've had Korean barbecue. I've watched a bunch of Ted Lasso. I'm doing a rewatch, and I had a nap. <laughs> so now it's super late at night, <laughs> and we're gonna try to get a little bit more stuff done today, which is great. I need to choose my fabric, wash my lining fabric if it needs to be washed, uh, and then cut out the two sets of fabrics just for the bodice. I'm not gonna lie. I need some like dopamine, serotonin boost, whatever, 
on this guy. So my list is probably going to be pretty minute on this one, uh, which, you know, probably does nothing but help you guys to understand the process of what's going on. But like, I need that little hit <laughs> to like break this down. Um, because this one has a lot of like hand sewing stuff that <clears throat> not looking forward to, but I'm <laughs> gonna do anyway. So yeah. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is pick out my fabrics. So here are the dilemmas. Okay, I have, this is lining fabric. I have this purple lining fabric and I have this black. Really? It's kind of like a dark gray. Yep, you can kind of see that on there. It is, it's black. It's definitely black. It's what my stays are made out of. But it's kind of like a washed black. Cool. This purple is already washed, is all I'm saying. <laughs> if we look in my closet, we can see that I have a roll of black silk here, which I have used before for a variety of other things on this channel. And I could use this. I need, I think, seven yards of fabric, and I'm pretty sure I have that there, so I don't think that would be a problem. I have this gorgeous purple, which is showing a little bit more blue on camera than it actually is in real life, but it is... I think shot blue maybe. Yep, it is shot blue. So there's this guy and it is gorgeous. Uh, I don't know how much I have here, but I'm guessing it's probably more than seven yards. I'd have to check that for sure. I just found out that it doesn't have to be seven yards. It only has to be like five and a half because most of these are like either 54 or 60 inch wide fabrics. Whereas if you have a 45 inch, you need seven yards. So that makes more sense. I also have this gorgeous situation, which is kind of like a purpley pink. I don't know how to describe this color. It is shot teal. So this is definitely on the table. Actually, it's in the thing underneath my table. All of these were slated to be 18th century dresses, so I don't really mind using any of them. So now I just have to figure out which one I want to use and what the lining fabric would be. I could do a black dress with a purple lining. I could do a black dress with a black lining. I could do a purple dress with a black lining. <sighs> Why am I like this? I'm going to sit down and think about this for a minute and then come back with a decision. I remembered I needed to adjust the pattern pieces also, so this is something I am looking at right now. Okay, so I've thought about it. I think I'm gonna do the black dress, and I'm gonna do a purple lining, which will allow me to not have to wash the lining now, which is fantastic, since this one is already washed. Also, like, I can't get enough of that combo, so <laughs> I've always wanted a black dress. Partially the reason I'm doing this is because I've always wanted this dress, and so, like, I might as well knock this one out first, right? Like. I feel like I got enough practice on the Ada gown, although this has some interesting differences to it. Like, it has a secret panel under the front that is, like, laces it shut, which is kind of cool, which takes the strain off of the pins, I guess. So, yeah, it's kind of a neat design, so I'm excited to try this out. But it's a familiar enough situation that I feel like, yeah, I can use my black silk on this. So, we're going to give it a go in the black silk. Let's go look at the board. Okay, we have chosen fabric, we don't need to wash the fabric, and we have already done the pattern adjustments. Woo woo! Okay, so now I need to cut out stuff and then I'm good to go for the day. So I have added two things, which is finish the lining edges and finish the silk edges. I will do that on a machine. I'm going to do that in between each one because the second I take these off of here, they will start to unravel. So I want to immediately go try to finish the edges on them for, for both layers. So I am not requiring myself to get all of this done tonight because that's a lot. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. So these are all edged now. 
All right, now we're done with all the pieces prep of the top half of the gown. Uh, we're gonna assemble the pieces and I'm gonna do all of that by hand just because I can. <laughs> so this is gonna be a lot of me doing hand sewing for quite some time now, but it should be fun. Um, and by fun, I mean not at all. They have an eyelet marked back here so that you can remove the boning. It's a silk gown, like, I'm not going to be removing that boning ever to wash it. I guess I'll make the eyelet so I can take it out if I hate the way the boning looks, I guess. But, like, I don't really see why that would happen. So, I have questions about that thing. <laughs> so, I'm going to do the thing, but mm, I'm going to do it on a machine because I have an eyelet thing and I... I can't imagine I'm ever actually going to use these eyelets for this, but okay. Here's my current list. I need to sew the eyelets on the back and then do the boning channels on the back. I know it looks like channels and <laughs> channels on the back. Um, I need to prep the back so it's a lot of ironing stuff and then sew the backs together, prep the side backs, and sew the side backs together to make the back of the gown. So that's what I'm going to put on here for now, and then I'll add as I go. Because I think we just go from making this to straight into doing the front of the gown, which, uh, okay, sure. Okay, we got this done. Let's go talk about that. So I have done the eyelets, which you can see here and here. I have drawn on this line for me to stitch on to make a boning channel. And I'm going to go do a simple back stitch along all of this to make boning channels for the boning that's going to go into the center back here. And this is the outside of the lining fabric. Okay, we have two boning channels happening. Very excited about those boning channels. Not going to put any bones in those just yet, but <laughs> there they are. So now I'm going to do this, which is to fold the other edges under, and then I will do the same thing on the outer fabric. And then baste them together, and then we will work on attaching them. Okay, I have prepared the backs. You can see the basting here. This is all going to get trimmed down, so I'm not too worried about that being slightly bigger. But now we're going to English stitch these two together. Can I explain this? Okay, so there's two linings, one on the outside, one on the outside, and the, the fashion fabric is on the inside. So I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to skip the first one and go through the next three layers. So fashion, fashion, lining. And then I'll turn it around and do the same thing. So fashion, fashion, lining. So you're always skipping one and then going through three layers. And what that does, it seams these two together into um, a beautiful seam in the back that actually has a little ridge in it, which is kind of funny, <laughs> um, but it'll be okay because it's boned. That lets it be completely encased in one pass so I don't have to do two passes on it. In case you need a visual on that, this is what that looks like. So you're you're skipping the first one, you're going over it and then through the next three and then skipping over the first one and going through the next three back. And you do this with a very small stitch. Okay, we have these two attached via that method I showed you, which is called the English stitch. It takes for free and ever. That one piece took me like two hours. Cool. Largely because the stitches are so close together, like you actually need to get them pretty close together. They're like 14, 15 stitches per inch kind of thing. And then also you can't like anchor it because you have to kind of go back and forth and it's in such a weird position like you're doing it on an edge. So like you can't really like pin it to a ham and then haul ass like that doesn't work. So. Here I am, so I'm just going to iron it open and then move along. This took all day, but these guys are attached now, so I'm going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a press. Mm -hmm. 
I have no idea how people do those dress in a day things where they make an entire gown in one day. And usually, I get it, there's usually at least two people working on that, but like, still. <laughs> there's like three back channels that I did there. That was it um, with the English stitch. To be fair, I've never English stitched before, so like, learning takes a minute, right? But like, I was grinding along towards the end there and still, they took me like six hours. <laughs> like five or six hours total to do them so there was some distractions because there's kitties in the house so like been having fun with them but <laughs> you know it did take a really long time so this is definitely going to be a two-parter for sure because like I can't even conceive of trying to get this done in one week like that is ridiculous and I'm not going to force myself to I am trying to go back <laughs> to sewing weekly vlogs I'm always trying to but I'm like oh I just have a little bit more to go and I never have a little bit more to go I have so much more to go but it's also weird to like <sighs> cut a video off like this is my challenge with these is like I it's weird to cut a video off like when you have what seems to be something very simple to do next or something that isn't really that filmable to do next like am I gonna show you six hours of me showing these back pieces no so <laughs> like you know I would rather have it be a complete dress every time if I could, but I cannot sew that in a week and I would like to upload more videos, so <laughs> that's what's happening right now. I cannot possibly sew this dress in a week, like it's just not something I am capable of, especially since I'm going to do it by hand for the most part, except that, that one set of eyelids. I've been listening to a new podcast called Antique Tea, which has been very interesting. The first, there's seasons, like based on what the topic is, so the first season has been the new romantics, so like Lord Shelley, Lord Byron, and Mary Shelley. Is his name Lord Shelley? Maybe not. <laughs> what do they call him? Bish? His, his like middle name is Bish, so they're like, this is the dish on Bish. And <laughs> then they got all kinds of silly with, you're not my Bish, Bish. <laughs> Very funny. The second one season was about four episodes plus one extra where one person watches the movie because the other one's already seen it um, called The Throne which is I believe on Amazon Prime. It's the same story. It's a Korean story and apparently like everybody in Korea knows this story <laughs> but it's about a prince that was kind of driven mad by his father. It's a really sad story like it was kind of awful to listen to. There's like there are some primary sources that are all in Korean. There's one official one that has been translated and that's by the guy's wife, the prince's wife. Um, and that one have been translated to English so their their source is pretty much this their his wife's retelling, so that is bias. <laughs> but like seems f fairly historically accurate. Also, if you you can go in back into Korean records because in Korea, I guess they have like crazy level records of like court every single thing that happened what everybody wore what everybody said there's just like people sneaking around writing stuff down all the time so they have really good records on this actually ha having happened they call it a fractured fa fairy tale but man seems like a mess anyway uh so there's that one is the second season the third season is prohibition so i'm just starting that one so that's what i've been listening to i've been Rewatching Ted Lasso because I miss it already. That last episode was really good. It wrapped everything up, like everything that I could tell. It's funny because I watched, I rewatched it like immediately, and there's stuff like literally from the first episode that gets wrapped all the way up in the last episode, which I'm just like, wow. They they took a moment to think about this, which is cool. So that's what's happening. I am threatening to listen to Artemis again, which is also by Andy Weir. He's the one who wrote The Martian. He also wrote this book called Artemis, and it is narrated by Rosario Dawson, and it is a heist on the moon book. <laughs> I'm like movie show something book book is the word I'm looking for. I also today went to uh, Audible because they're having an 85% off sale until this Friday which is going to be bef over before you see this but uh, they have a big sale so anything that is under the price of what a credit costs me which is I think seven dollars and something so if it's under seven dollars when it's on sale I'm I am not likely to but like I will consider buying it like with just cash because it's cheaper than than the credit I would be spending on it so um sometimes I go through those so I went through that and I bought like seven seven books I think to read so I'm excited about that 
mostly that's what's been going on over here while I do all this hand sewing that and like you know have kitties to play with and stuff so that's been fun what have you guys been doing leave me comments down below let me know what are you watching what are you listening to so anyway I have made a new list for the task board so I'll go ahead and show you that okay here's our task list for today there are 84 task list items <laughs> that are within this book list although I'm condensing some here but we are on number 12 <laughs> with all that stuff I've already done so um, if I get this done today this will be through number 17 so I need to prep the fronts uh, it's a bunch of just ironing stuff uh, I need to sew some boning channels in and then sew the eyelets which I think is just gonna take me hours and hours and hours so wish me luck I am a wee bit nervous to actually make all these eyelets in here when I know for a fact that I'm going to be trimming a bunch of this out right like well, I already know that because of the try-on. I just didn't cut it out of the pattern because I didn't really see a need for that, but I'm starting to see a need for that. <laughs> so I think that I am going to go try on the mock-up one more time to just see about how much I think I'll cut out, and then I'll just start these lower. Okay, I'm in my stays, and I mean, you can barely, very clearly see <laughs> like how much extra there's up here. So I drew in the line along my stays right here including a curve up to this so I'm gonna go like flesh that out a little bit and then add 5 eighths of an inch to it and then cut that out and that'll be my template for how much I'm gonna go cut out of, of these uh, these stays just to get like and I'll probably pencil it onto the pattern just so I know for next time how much I usually cut these down because you know you want a nice low bust line okay I have chewed this up and then I have added 5 eighths inch of a seam allowance, although it probably honestly could be less. I have these cool rulers that are, you know, like a French curve-ish kind of looking thing, but they have, this is the, this 5 eighths. I also have ones that are half an inch. I'll just let you draw the seam allowance right on. Okay, I have pinned all four pieces together because I want them all to be cut exactly the same. I traced on that top line here, so I'm just going to go cut them all exactly the same. Because even if they're messed up, I would like them to be identical. <laughs> and then I'm going to go zigzag the edge again, because it needs to get done. I have done the prep on both of these fronts. I have clipped the notches, turned these under, ironed them, turned this fold under, and drawn in my two boning channel lines that I need to do. So four total boning channels are going to go in right now. I'm going to go watch some Ted Lasso and put these boning channels in. I am very much threatening <laughs> to put these uh these holes in on my machine because i can <laughs> the dumbest thing happened guys so when you're kicking yourself for being the one that does this i do it too i made two of the same side so i need to go uh redraw these lines on the back here and then flip all of this over and re-steam it down okay so i did not get very far last night i got the boning channels in but i did not get the eyelets in i have decided for the sake of my own sanity I am gonna do them on the machine and then if I need to finish them by hand I can do that later I have this sort of sample this is that thing I made that was the sampler of all the the stitches that are specialty buttonhole -y things so there is the eyelet stitch and it looks pretty good so um, you stitch the stitch and then you use the awl to push the fibers out but like they will try to creep back in so you can just use the ends of the thread like leave some and then whip them around real quick afterwards just to like hold the fabric out so i think that's the method i'm gonna do so i can try to get that done today because we're almost in a week here <laughs> so i would like to finish this video having like some major part of the bodice done if possible i'm gonna stop note tomorrow no matter what okay so what i'm gonna try to get accomplished today is sewing the eyelets cutting and shaping the boning and then inserting it um, and then after that I need to insert the side lining, fit the strap lining, and then insert the side outer. This is, I think, what I'm going to try to complete for this particular video. Hopefully I can get all this done. It's actually a lot of stitching um, for me to be doing hand stitching. And then we will have at least a fully formed bodice together to call good for this video. That's one of the, like, pitfalls of trying to do weekly videos is, like, I can't possibly complete this dress in a week. Like, I mean, I guess I could, but... <laughs> I don't think I'd have hands left, so, and I am trying to hand sew as much of it as possible, with the exception of some eyelets, <laughs> but yeah, I'm not sewing any of these seams by machine, so they take a while, they take a bunch of time each, because I am a slow sewer, as I always say, so yeah, we're gonna try to get this done, and if so, we'll have a good look at the, the front of the garment, and we will get through step 33 of 84.
fun time. Okay, so I'm gonna give this a very good pressing so that all of these folded down edges stay down really well. I have done this before, but they're starting to come up. Then they give you this um, template here. So you can see that this is a spiral lacing template. You know that it is spiral lacing because on the top there will be two holes. And then if you were to look at this guy, there's two holes that are close together. And what that does is offset these so they go back and forth across. So if I line these holes up, you can see that it makes it crisscross. Like they're not even like they would be in cross lacing. So I'm going to go ahead and use this template, like poke some holes in this template and then mark the holes in the, the eyelet channel that I have left in here. Woo, that's hard to see because it's black on purple, but it's in there. Uh, it's even hard to see in person up close. So <laughs> perhaps I should have used a more apparent thread, but actually it's kind of nice that it, it disappears. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and poke some holes in this, give this a press and then come back and mark this stuff. Okay, you're getting kind of a side view here, but I have pressed them and I have actually marked this one already. Uh, you can see maybe the marks on it. So then what I do is this, the other one has two at the top, so I'm going to flip this around and put two at the bottom. But I have marked an equivalent to the top hole, and that's really the only one you have to match up. So in order to do this, I frequently just like make sure these are even like that and then I will either pin or I will use washi tape on the top of these. I will pin them while I get my washi tape to keep this in its spot. I mean pinning it actually just kind of works. I mean that's the one of the joys of having this wool mat. And then I will mark them keeping, trying to keep it in the middle of the channel that I have made here. And I'll go through afterwards and remark them so that they are definitely in the center of the channel, but I just want to be able to see where the marks are. So I do two or three or four and then remark them, but they turn out pretty good this way. Uh, I could use Sarai's gauge, but this came with this particular gauge for whatever reason. So I decided to use it. I just punched holes straight in it <laughs> um, using an awl. So that helped me to be able to just use this gauge. And there we have a fully marked set. And I have a little doubled up piece here. I'm gonna go do a couple samples because that's critical. Okay, I'm like, let me put this on something white so you can see. Okay, there's my sample and I've made holes in it. So that's what they look like. Uh, these don't really need that much fortification afterwards, but I will let them sit for a while and see if they start closing back up. If they don't, I'm just gonna punch these and then move on with my life because I think the cord that goes through them will probably stay in them for the most part. I should also make sure the cord that I have that will go in them will fit through here. I do not have any linen lacing cord, bummer, but I do have this cotton butcher's twine which I will either use or replace with linen at some point. Uh, you're probably wondering how you get that laced. I use a giant needle with a giant head on it. And then I wax the tip of it, and then I essentially just sort of like pinch it, or in my case, bite it, because I like biting things, um, into a flat plane in order to get it through the needle eye. And then I lace it up. Okay, here they are. Are they perfect? No. Are they good enough? Heck yeah. They're a lining thing. Uh, this little ice pick all seems to be the perfect size for these. These are down in my Amazon store, which is linked down below if you want one. Also... If you don't want to do that, <laughs> you can just look up Ice Pick All. I think that's what they're called, but they're very slender and sharp. Okay, so this is done. And now we need to cut some boning and then shape the boning. Here are the two of the pieces, the front two pieces. I need to cut the back ones also. Um, these are synthetic whalebone. They are, in fact, plastic, in case anyone's wondering about that. Yeah, you can use zip ties. Um, these are just slightly more flexible and they're heat malleable in a ways that regular is actually a different kind of plastic, I think. So I'm just using these. You can get this stuff from a variety of sources, including corsetmakingsupplies.com or whatever that thing is called. I'll try to leave a link down below for you. I think um, Colonial Lomersburg sells this. I think Burnley and Trowbridge sells this. Like a lot of people have uh, synthetic whalebone 
a lot of people ask me all the time, like, where do you get your stuff? I either put my links down below for you, or if for some reason I didn't, like, I just googled it, so, you know, it'll be whatever the Google is. In case you don't know, you can, your burning comes out, like, it's super curved, right? So, I put my iron on synthetic, I hold it on there just a little bit, it'll start getting, like, a little sticky watch out for that because it can stick to your iron and then I so I mean you could use a pressing cloth if you're a brave soul I am not um, so I just heat it up a little bit and then put a weight on it while it cools and it usually makes it much straighter it's really hard to get it all the way out so like that's pretty good I was trying to put the boning in the back here so that I could like, you know, fit the boning. Cool. Yeah, it's uh, got basting in it, so I need to take all that out. Okay, we got the boning inserted. Now we have to insert the side lining so that we can fit the strap. Now they want you to base together the side piece, which is this piece, to the back and the front, making it whole. So do that on both sides. So I make a full garment here, like you know, the bodice part, and then also based on the strap on the front and leave the back pinned so that you can adjust it. Cool. <sighs> I'm hesitant to base this, although I might base it on the machine real quick to do that fitting because like, I feel like this is gonna be really good based on my past experience with A, the Ada gown and also my, my trial fitting, like it fit perfectly around me. So I guess I'm gonna base this on the machine so that I can do it really quick and then fit the straps. Okay, so we've got this together and we have the side edges folded down as they say. So I'm going to go ahead and baste slash pin them to this situation so that I can see if this all works. I messed up my spiral lacing here, obviously, <laughs> but it's okay, it's on. The body, bodice, whatever fits really great. I'm very tempted to just leave this stitching in and not restitch this because I want to. <laughs> uh, also, it's aligning. I don't really care. Uh, okay, so the shoulder straps need, I think, my usual, it's not so bad on this one, adjustment to make them more lay down flatty, which is, I can either take it in here or I can take it in the back in the same spot, which I probably will do. But that means I have to unlace my whole self, <laughs> take this off, repin it, and put it back on, and lace myself back in. Yes, it is a thing I have to lace in every time, which is why I left the needle on there. <laughs> oh, do you guys like my Halloween socks? Isn't this a look right now? Fit check! <laughs> anyway, the height of the bodice is really good. I like it. I did a good job on cutting this down, so I feel good about that. The straps are a little wider than they probably need to be, but I can also scooch them in, like just take a little off. They're, I did need to widen them, just maybe not quite as much. <laughs> I could probably take off like maybe a half an inch off what I did. We'll see. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go take this off, repin it, and put it back on. All right, so we are back with a, a proper situation here. Still looking good. This guy is feeling much better. No real strain on it, so if I if I act weird, it gets weird, obviously. Like I could probably take this in, but I think it's because it's too wide. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's probably fine for right now. So I'm gonna go set all of these seams in permanently. I am just gonna press these and leave them because they feel good. And I do not feel like messing with them. These had a little adjustment stem to them, so I will do these ones. I do think I said this earlier, but when I cut this off of the spool, I waxed the end of it. So I just like took this and rubbed it on the wax, into, and it feels super waxy. And then I flattened it. And this also helps it not unravel and kind of stay like this, so you can re-thread it whenever you want. So I do recommend that technique. Okay, so this is done, and this is done. Okay, everything is together as you can see. The instructions have you put this on with like a hem stitch. Can I make that work? 
There you go. So it's like tiny whip stitches in there. Ooh. Anyway, the lining is now completely together. I'm going to put on the side seam, hopefully. I'm going to have some dinner and then do that. And then uh, cut for this week because I have many other things to do. I have a very exciting weekend. What's happening? I am going to a tea and house tour with a bunch of people, apparently, in Oakland tomorrow. And then I'm going to a food truck rally uh, for dinner. Hopefully going to get a ramen burrito. Those are fantastic. It's like a burrito with like bulgogi and ramen noodles and an egg and some other stuff. It's good. It's real good. It sounds gross, but it's real good. <laughs> my husband like changed my mind. So I'm going to go get one of those. And then on Sunday, I have a photo shoot with uh, Lori Tavin and Lynn to shoot this lady, which means... <laughs> I need to put her sleeves back on. <laughs> I know it looks like they're on. They're not. They're just pinned on. So <laughs> I had to get them resituated with Nicole while I was there and I never actually sewed them. So <laughs> things are coming home to roost at this point. <laughs> so yeah. So I will be mad stitching hopefully sometime tonight. Maybe tomorrow we'll see. But those sleeves have got to go back on. <laughs> I'm a little stressed out. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go eat dinner. Then we are gonna sew the rest of the, what I'm gonna do for this week on and then we're gonna call it because at some point we have to call it, right? <laughs> okay, we have this like tinily prick stitched on. You can probably not even see that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna baste this down on this side so that it's like firmly attached so it's ready for the front section to get attached. And with that, I'm gonna call this video because it has been well over a week and we are trying to do weekly vlogs is so difficult <laughs> it's so difficult because you just want to have a whole project because that is what is appealing to people on YouTube anyway we're gonna finish this up so let me go cross it off on my chest list and I'm basically just gonna like come in tomorrow and start sewing again after I edit this video up for you guys so we will continue right along this path very excitedly anyway as always go into the basement is that what we're calling it the cellar <laughs> the root cellar. The thing below the basement, which is the down below, is the comments section. Go into the comments section and let me know how you're doing, what's going on with you, what you're working on, what you're listening to, what you're watching. I am currently listening to the Prohibition season, which is season three of Antique Tea, which they do it non-linearly. They do it in by telling the stories of different women having to do with Prohibition, and they're telling it each woman's story. Like, through the era so you keep going back and learning about it and then like how they kind of cross over sometimes and whatever so that's pretty cool so that is what i'm listening to i finished a ted lasso rewatch so that was very intense again i cried again <laughs> what did i see this week i saw transformers you know it wasn't as bad as i thought it was gonna be that's what i will say about it it was not nearly as bad as i thought it was gonna be it's definitely like not a good movie <laughs> but it's also like i went to see a transformers movie so like did I not know what was going to happen? Of course I knew it was going to happen. So like, you know, as far as that goes, it was pretty good. It didn't do the thing Michael Bay movies do, which is like spin constantly around. Like the camera spins around all the time and you get really dizzy. It did not do that. <laughs> I really just like watching the Transformers like transform. Anyway, I thought it was alright. Like definitely wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, which is like an excellent rating for Transformers. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you got to the end, you can comment down below to the end. That's a great thing to comment in the comment section. That makes me really happy every time I see it. So if you watched all the way to the end, do say so. Today I did an 18th century shoot over with Lynn at Lori Tavon's house, and that was very fun. We had a good time. Got a couple of very cute hats. Very excited about that. <laughs> so I was like, was I making content today? Yes, but not this kind of content. Ugh, oh, sorry. The content creator's life is always like rushing to do the next thing, so yeah. I've been living that life. <laughs> I should be looking for a job. That's what I should be doing. Okay, I'm just babbling at this point. I will see you guys next week. Love you guys.